All right, good evening, and thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook. It is a twofold special edition today. It is Halloween, of course, and uh, I hope everybody is going to enjoy their evening, whatever you're doing, whether it's just sitting watching TV or whether you're out trick or treating, whether it's you and the kids or whether you're out yourself. I don't know uh, whatever tickles your fancy, but um, it looks as if we are going to see a little bit of um, of unsettled conditions uh, pushing through. Um, as we go through the evening, we've got an area of low pressure actually that's kind of lifting up uh, from the south here. So uh, squeezing the isobars means that we're going to see an increase in wind. As well as that, we're going to see some outbreaks of fairly heavy rainfall as well. But it's going to be largely on the mild side uh, through the course of the evening, as you can see here off the latest GFS. So hope you have a good and safe evening to come now also um and more importantly um, it is also um november outlook day for uh, marvel and weather.com as well and it's just been released actually on the website and uh, i want to quickly look at some of the uh, ideas that i've got with regards to the month ahead but the uh, firstly a look at the um you know look back at september and october both fairly wet months actually compared to what we've seen during the summer season. Hot and dry was the overall theme June through August. And then we've seen a, a, a pretty significant flip around during the month of September. I believe it was directly attributed to the um, change in the overall pattern across the middle latitudes. Then we had the tropics kind of activate. Then they released heat northwards and forcing high latitude blocking to develop negative uh, North Atlantic oscillation. We had uh, the coolest second half to September since 2012, thanks to um, Gavin Partridge for that interesting fact. But the, the, the big story, I think, was the flip around in terms of going from very dry to quite wet. And I say quite wet because it wasn't a super wet month but uh, it was certainly a big difference compared to what we had during the previous months, um, which which uh, ahead of that. So certainly the overall emphasis has remained on warmer than normal. September started off very warm, then turned cool. So the overall month averaged to slightly above average, as you can see here. The month of October, wet, yes, but also very, very warm indeed, one of the warmest on record and the year to date remains uh, very very warm also this is the cfs v2 by the way for the month of november uh, this is uh, looking at the hemispheric view so this is of course directly off my website so please do go on the marvel and weather.com and check this out for yourself and um, quickly just kind of rattling through it it's been a very very long day i must admit i've been up since 11 o'clock last night the time is now what uh, 25 to 4 in the evening it's been a 15 hour day and uh, i'm pretty tired if i'm being honest with you but um yeah i want to look at this because it is interesting trough extending from iceland to the uk remember of course this chart is tilted here's north america greenland iceland the british isles so we've got the trough almost bang slap between iceland and the british isles here we've got the azores high slightly stronger than normal we've got also this high by the way over the eastern portion of north america strong ridge and um, over the Aleut Aleutians, as you can see here and we've also got one here um down the spine of the ural mountains here interesting enough you can kind of hook up the area of high pressure over the urals to the eastern north america ridge and also that ridge over the Aleutians here. So we've got the trough over the central and eastern, central and western portion of North America, trough over the UK as well. So it's indicating an, an element of blockiness. It's also indicating that we've not got that direct west to east flow. Notice that here. This is for the whole month of November, averaged out, remember. So you have to kind of take this, uh, you know with a pinch of salt here we've got this trough there's the european view of the uh, 500 millibar pattern wet than normal as you can see here warm than normal also here is the uh, arctic oscillation north atlantic oscillation uh, positive uh, arctic oscillation uh, trending 
uh, towards still positive, but it's coming down a little bit. If you notice here, the NAO is expected to remain uh, firmly uh, neutral. It stays positive, but it's kind of flatlined, which indicates quite a an Atlantic-driven pattern. And an Atlantic-driven pattern, of course, would bring some pretty wet weather across the western side of the British Isles, Ireland, Scandinavia, for example, also drier across parts of Iberia, where you're closer to the Azores high, of course. I think um, the first half of the month will be quite Atlantic-dominated. Clash between subtropical air and polar air over the North Atlantic means that we could see some fairly significant areas of low pressure. Uh, quite the pattern, uh, periodically, I think. Uh, we could have some fairly deep areas of low pressure that bring uh, gale or severe uh, gale conditions across the British Isles and across western portions of Europe. Also, a lot of rainfall as well expected. Uh, this is uh, off the GFS here, taking us, uh, this is accumulated precipitation, taking us out to the middle portion of the month here. Could see uh, in excess of 250. Uh, to in fact 200 to 300 millimeters of rain uh, over the uh, windward side of the British Isles. I also go on to talk about the colder, uh, less wet second half of November potential. Now this is the ECMWF uh, 10 millibar uh, uh, zonal mean wind speeds here. So the average um, line is this thick red line in the middle. Notice here that we are actually marginally below normal in terms of uh, zonal wind speeds here. They go, uh, they're projected to go above normal, as you can see here, during the first uh, what 10 days of the month. Then, actually, the modeling uh, generally sees it going slightly below normal once again, which is quite interesting. And if you look at the, the GFS here, it is indicating even Saturday the 5th of November, We've got some warming taking place in Asia, pushing up against the pole. So it pushes it, it may stretch it slightly, but I think overall it remains largely intact. So this is, of course, the stratospheric polar vortex. The tropospheric polar vortex is somewhat different, but looking purely at the 10 HPA level, the, the stratospheric polar vortex at the, at the, at the very highest levels, it really does remain largely intact, which I think means you're not going to get any real, you know, appreciable influence if we were to get a significant warming take place even over the next couple of weeks. The thing to remember is it takes you, it's generally one to two weeks after any significant warming. And that's, of course, taking into account, um, you know, downward transfer of that energy from stratosphere to troposphere to affect the 500 millibar level. So I just simply don't see any kind of influence that the polar vortex or any weakening has on really the November pattern overall. I do go on to say, however, that uh, there is the potential for some colder conditions some potential for high latitude blocking during the second half of the month of November. Why would that be the case? Well, if you look at the Malangelian oscillation, we see that it rotates through the Indian Ocean, the continental maritime region, and into the western portion of the Pacific. So we are seeing a, a, an eastward propagation of this MJO pulse over the next couple of weeks here you notice here that we go from um, sinking over the the americas here to um to upward motion here quite significant upward motion then we go back towards sinking once again over the americas uh, towards the uh, middle portion of november this may um provide uh, a degree of high latitude blocking if this materializes now we are seeing as a result of the manjulian oscillation progressing east the tropics starting to reactivate once again so tropical storm lisa is currently uh, over the caribbean and expected to head towards central america in the coming days here so i think the manjulian oscillation 
any kind of late season tropical um, activity and there is um, models that indicate that we will see uh, the development of other systems possibly uh, as we progress through the, the first half of September. As I play through this loop, this is the Atlantic view of course, still got uh, plenty of weather within the subtropics or deep tropics and what we will see is systems, according to the modeling anyway, uh, trying to develop. We've got one system here that actually tries to head up towards the Carolinas here. And then as we play through the loop, that feature kind of lifts on off to the north. That may, in, in fact, transfer some um, tropical energy, some tropical heat northwards. And in turn, now this is, by the way, this is kind of the time frame 12th through the 14th of November. Say, uh, you know, you know, five, five to seven days after that occurs, if it was to occur, may build high pressure up towards Greenland, up towards the Arctic region, and in turn force Arctic air into North America and into the western portion of Europe here. So the, the modeling is seeing the development of tropical activity during the month of November. And remember what happened during the uh, month of September and what happens sometimes during September can repeat itself a few weeks later. And the modeling is hinting at the, the redevelopment of tropical activity, some transfer north of heat that may force the buckling of the jet stream, high latitude blocking and the release of cold into the middle altitude pattern. So there's a lot of elements to look at. Please do check out my, my November Outlook uh, on the website and uh, please drop a comment also on what you think here. But I'm not necessarily writing off a cold November. In fact, quite the opposite. I do think there's an element of, of question mark over the second half of the month. I think it is Manjulian oscillation triggered as opposed to anything uh, that the polar vortex may deliver. I just don't think the time frame is right, even if we do get some sort of, of, of a significant weakening. It would need to be a significant weakening in order to uh, you know, become involved in, in, in our weather pattern during the month of November. I think that comes at the end of the month, at the very earliest, more likely into the month of December. But there is plenty of room for a lot of different interesting things to come, I think. So keep it right here on my YouTube channel. Please check out marvelandwillive.com and check out the November uh, Outlook as well. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your Halloween. Take care. I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.